Hey everybody, this is Eric Mueller, the host of The Eric Mueller Show. You're tuned into the podcast that explores what makes any successful person's inner clock tick by unlocking the most impactful tools within their success portfolio. I'm joined today by Anessa Pono Marioveta, founder and CEO of Nessa's Hemp. She's a true inspiration in the realm of well being, and her company is revolutionizing the field by introducing the world's first full spectrum product. Let's head on over to the interview. Inessa, welcome to the show. I can't wait to be here. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thanks for making the time. I know you mentioned your Chicago base, so we're at least on the same time zone, so it's not too late in the evening. But before we, we dive really deep into this entrepreneurial story of yours and the expertise you have in the holistic health uh, industry, we want to know what makes up your success portfolio. So if you're new to this show, a quick background on this, a way to view it is to, to kind of think of finances. That's probably the most simple way to think of it. The things you invest in to build towards that financial future. Well, here on the Eric Mueller Show, I want to discover how successful people like Anessa invest in themselves and build that foundation for their success as a whole. So Anessa, start us off. What are some skills or traits, habits or mindsets that make up that success portfolio for you? That's such a great question. So I think the most uh, successful, what it got, got me to the success is I never took no for an answer. And when I say I'm talking no for an answer, the people normally don't talk to anyone except extremely high level, presidential level people. Um they would never even open your doors, not talk to you. I just was convicted and convinced myself that I'm not taking no for an answer. And if I need to know something, if I need to get something out from this person, I will just going to continue and found a way because I know statistically, if there's a will, there's the way. But at the same time, I know every problem does have minimum three solutions. So I never focused on the negative. I always focused on the positive and how to make it happen. That's one of those, but there's many, many others and I'm happy to share. But as I said, that's that's probably as most people describe me, you're the hardest working person I know in NASA. But then at the same time, they tell me you're so consistent and you're so, so persistent where like nobody can beat you in that. Like, because I tell people all the time, they don't believe me that in my age, I was able to achieve what I achieved. And so how did you do that? Like somebody funded you or like I said, no, completely solo funded, completely by myself, completely zero mentors. I had to learn from very hard mistakes myself, but at the same time, I remind people all the time, when you went to the party and were having a birthday party, when you went to the, someone's wedding, when you actually went on vacation, when you went to sleep, I was the entire time working and figuring out the answers. So people like, what do you mean always working? And that's what I always say. You always out there, whatever you want to achieve. But I think the biggest problem and challenge, and that's what I teach kids because I do have certain partnerships with UFC people and and I do coach and train and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, with that being said, I do work with uh, smaller gyms for children because they're so innocent and they're so precious to me. And I really want them to grow up as a powerful human beings. And I do volunteer my time sometimes in Miami uh, with kids. And that's what I tell kids. I, I When I stand there and I pretend to be a biological cell and I pretend to be all kinds of different things. And I tell them, you must know what's your purpose in life, what makes you happy. So you don't have to worry about the money. You don't have to worry about uh, who you really going to be dating or sleeping with or the, doing the job with. Like none of that stuff matter. The only one thing that matters is what is your why? why you are here from the moment you know that answer your job is never going to be the job for you and you're just going to go absolutely crazy and wild in a positive way <laughs> yeah gosh i mean you can you can just sense that that passion and positivity in your voice as you're saying that and i think it, it's really you know pretty eye opening to to hear you say you know that that working piece that hard work piece there's no way around that if you want to achieve success and if you want to really if you want to be happy you're going to have to put something in to get that out. So it's not, you can't just sit around and, and do nothing. I mean, not that anybody's really doing that probably all that often, but you can't expect to 
find your purpose if you're just sitting there waiting for it to pass you by, right? You got you to like put in some effort. And, you know, you, you, had, you had the experience of, you know, you grew up not in the US, you grew up in Lithuania, and you had, you know, what you probably would describe as not the most ideal childhood. You came to the US. I'd love to hear that story. Love, love to have you share that story of just what led you to, to be here and what, what kind of prompted you to, to develop those, those qualities within yourself of that persistent positivity. I definitely going to share that, but I also want to add one more thing that is, I think, very important for people to understand. For me, it's very natural. It's like my nature now. But if someone else would listen to my life and say, I can't believe you said no to this, people would just go crazy. But I'll give you an example from today. I was uh, I was I consulted a, a possible patient or customer, whatever we call that client, right, for his wife, cancer and multiple other issues. And he told me. I'm going to send you a plane and be going to meet, be going to, they're going to, my plane is going to fly where you need to be. Be going to talk in person, I'll pay your hours, no matter what. And then we will discuss everything on my yacht, 150 feet yacht. And because we have to go with my wife in the Bahamas and like, no, none of that stuff going to happen. I'm not going on your plane. I'm not going on a yacht. This is my hour. This is my zoom. If you do my way, there's no any other way. And I clearly, any person would truly go and do these things. None of that stuff even triggered my heart. Not even, I was like, even surprised. He asked me, that's like, why in the world do you come up with these ideas? That's so outside the norm. So I almost got upset actually, but then you can't get upset on people because they're just people. They're just being themselves. Right. Um, the reason I think my hardships, what got me where I am today is I did see a lot of suffering. I'm not going to lie. I did see a lot of suffering from early childhood. I've been abused by doctors. I've been abused by system. I've been abused by people. And especially when I came to United States, I've been really abused because I came with this big, open heart, innocent soul, trying to be better and help people, saving every animal, saving everybody that sees in front of you. So I had this big heart because I was also raised on very strict values, like such as if you steal, I'm going to cut your fingers. If you're going to lie, I'm going to take your tongue out. You know, if you're going to cheat, we're going to put you in the garbage can. So lie, cheat, and steal was not even an option. Like that's not even in your thought process. You can't even think about it. So when I start really experiencing pain, because then I got introduced to the real world, right? In, in the United States in very young age as 21. And why are these people doing these things to me? I thought that was God had some, you know, some business with me that he didn't finish. And I was like a bad person or something. But then I learned this is a real world. That's what people do. And and because I lived in this very closed world. So these struggles truly empowered me instead of being a victim instead of saying what happened to me please feel bad for me or sorry for me i empowered myself i said one day i'll be a strong powerful woman i'll come back in this situation i will screw things up not just for myself but the rest of the world and that's exactly what i've been doing it's it's incredible so i think that was my uh one of my motivations uh not in the medical industry because that was another why big strong why but when it comes to the dedication, I just simply chose not to be a victim. I chose to empower myself in every struggle and every very hard situation, I would say. I, I, I'm actually planning to even release the movie on this and documentary, so I don't want to say too much. But there was that, that was a lot happened in my life. So, Yeah, and I'm sure that's also kind of, you know, another kind of tangential piece to, to the success portfolio that you know, I, I like to explore with people is how do they define success? So it's, it's, it sounds like maybe you had, you know, you certainly had expectations when you came to the States of what it might be like and what people might behave like. I'm, I'm curious if you also had similar thoughts on what success is or what happiness could look like. You know, do you, do you, if you were to define success today, what does it look like for you and how has that maybe changed for you over time? Uh, in the beginning, I was thinking like majority of people's success is when you make money and have a nice apartment, a nice car. And just I was in very boxed lifestyle, I would say boxed mindset. But I, I took myself out pretty quickly from that. And um, success for me today is I am not going anywhere until I leave the legacy, until I change this world 
from hate into the love and from dark into the light. That's my success. That's my definition because I'm convicted. I can do it. I know I will do it and I'm not stopping until I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. And and a, a piece that I really loved when I was looking at your website, a quote that you had on there was you cannot transform others unless you transform yourself. And so that really, that kind of struck home with me. It's kind of struck a chord. It's like, really, you can only control yourself and what, you know, the actions that you do and the input that you have, you can't control other people. But I share that with you. I mean, I do want to, you know, have positive influence on people and motivate people to chase, you know, their dreams. And I I hope that, you know, when people listen to the show, they they have some of those feelings. That's certainly the goal. But you're, you're doing that now with your company, with Nessa's Hemp. Would you share with us maybe, you know, did you always expect to start a company of your own or where did, where did you really get that passion to, you know, work all the time and really, you know, when someone's going, going and partying and, or sleeping, you know, you're, you're building your brand, you're, you're kind of harnessing a craft to change the world and, and really impact people in a positive way. Yeah, it's a deep question, but I'll try to be on the surface level because this podcast one hour or 30 minutes is not going to be enough. Uh Nessa's hemp actually was born by mistake. I was forced to open this company. I was forced to start this company. I never wanted to start CBD, hemp industry kind of type of thing. What happened is uh, about six, seven years ago, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And again, I lose track on years because I simply work seven days a week. And I'm not joking. I truly mean it. Um my mother's cancer was something I really was looking for. I was asking God, what's my purpose in life? I felt like I got my success. I got a nice car. I got my apartment. I got everything on a piece of paper. And I just need to find a nice man, get married and have children. I'm like, no, that's not going to work. Not that I don't want to get married and have children, but I felt like I'm not fulfilling. There's something is missing. I have everything on a piece of paper, but in my heart is like a little tiny hole and it, it just can't allow me to be in peace. So what happened is I was simply asking, you know, God and universe to show me what's my purpose in life. And one year later, I got the phone call from my mother and she said she got cancer. She's dying six months left to live. She's tears in her eyes. And I said, mom, this is the best news ever. And I'm happy and I can't, and I'm crying from happiness right now. And she's like crying from sadness and she's, and I'm crying from happiness. And she couldn't believe because she knows I'm not drinking alcohol. She knows I'm not on medications and not going bipolar. So she literally had to FaceTime me and repeat the same sentence again. And I said, mom, as you see, I'm not sleeping, talking, walking. I understand what you're telling me. I said, I get it. I said, mom, you don't understand. Your cancer is changing the world right now. You're going to be perfectly fine. And tons of thousands of people will be perfectly fine too. Because I saw the vision. I I was in desire to know what I am, what's my purpose. So that's how I became this, what do you call a holistic wellness coach that I can't even call myself because we produce results like... um, Mayo Clinic can 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 do it, you know. So with that being said, but I'm gonna stay under this title. I'm totally fine with that. With that being said, I became this holistic expert. So now anything I do or touch, I need to know the quality, I need to know the chemistry, I need to understand if that's gonna impact your body somehow negatively. Because when you are so sick, stage four cancer, you can't afford to take anything more. Your glass is full of toxins, modellions, biofilms, microtoxins. I mean, you name it. So what happened is that I knew the importance of the hymn because that's how I helped my mom that is happy, alive, celebrating her life until today. It's been cancer-free for years, no chemo, no radiation. So what happened, I said, I need to know because I understood the essentials of hemp and I understood the essentials of endocannabinoid system. It's the same importance as you need to breathe your air that's how much you need of this plant you can function without hemp plant in your body now we just need to have a definition of what kind of hemp plant so with that being said as somebody who's responsible and do recommend things i had to find a good brand that i can represent and i just went deep 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 i visited the whole country Number one, labeled market marketed companies in the United States. I actually walked in their facilities. I tested their products, third-party lab testing, parts per billion. And the things I found, the things I saw, it was be- 
beyond horrifying. It was just, it was beyond nightmare. It was beyond, it's crimes against humanity, I would say. And and I got really upset. And I said, is, this is me going crazy after spending tens of thousands of dollars on this research to know the truth. I said, I probably going crazy because it can be the whole world doing wrongly. It can be. Got It got to be some good people out there. So I decided to chat with some top experts. I talk called a, I didn't call, I call him, but he didn't answer. That's one of those moments where you got to never give up because I called and tried to reach smart me, a number one world expert who discovered human endocannabinoid system where each university is in desire to have two minute conversation with this man and from Israel. And I decided that he's going to pick up my phone and I'm just going to talk to him. Right. So of course he didn't answer his phone because I got to know if I'm going crazy or the industry is going crazy. So with that being said, uh, what I did, I just was so consistent on him where when he called me back, finally, three months later, I was literally pulling, I was in the car wash where my wheels were locked, just got locked. I put my car on neutral and I'm about to start the whole process. And I see Israel is calling me back after three months chasing him. I left him voicemails. I said, if you're not going to answer, I'm going to find you. I'm going to fly in Israel. I'm going to knock your door. I'm going to find your family. I'm going to do whatever it takes. You can't escape from me. I need to know the truth. And he finally calls me back. I'm in the car wash and I look back. There's no cars behind me. And this whole noise is about to start an automatic car wash. And I said, okay, I, I'm going to lose this phone call or if I'm going to lose the tires, my wheels. I said, I prefer to lose my tires and wheels and I'm going to pull back and just going to answer this phone call. <laughs> and I, I really did. I destroyed my tires. I wasn't, ha- I was so happy about it. So we talked. I talked to him. We spent a pretty good half an hour on the call and he was surprised I'm not from certain university of Harvard or Stanford. And yeah, he agreed with me that the industry is absolutely uh, bad news and he wished me good luck. And he said, if you one day overcome the challenge, let me know. I'll be somehow interested to know what's going on. So um, it was a beautiful experience just to chat with someone like him. And then I realized he basically gave me no hope. And I'm like, there, every problem has minimum three solutions. Like, come on, like, we're, I can't even come up with one. It's just not going to work. So I contacted number one professor, a cannabis expert in the United States, beyond, um, beyond smart person, intelligent, you can possibly imagine. And and I, I said, he hung up on me. He didn't even talk to me. I was like, oh, God, gosh, that's a bad idea. So I decided to actually figured out what's his schedule because I saw he was doing elections and speaking engagements and things. So I found out he's doing in California. I said, perfect. I'm just going to fly to knock his shoulders and I'm just going to see the guy and I'm going to push him in the corner. I'm going to convince him to talk to me. And, you know, because again, and that's what I did. I talked to him and, and he finished his panel and he talked to a million people because everybody won't talk to him. And then he ended up walking towards the, towards the lobby and I followed Dr. Shoulders like, hey, do you remember me, Dr. Leaf? It's like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, I don't remember. It's like, you just hung up on me a few weeks ago. And it's like, oh, really? It's like, yeah, so you can't run away. We, you, if you run, I'll run too. Like, this is it. You're going to talk to me. It's like, you're chasing me around. It's like, yes, I am. So basically spending four hours with him in the lobby, he wished me good luck. He said, I admire your integrity. I admire the way you desire to make this world a better place. But if you will decide to take this route, I want to let you know it's going to be bloody painful and most likely you're not going to (laughs) survive. And I said, perfect. I said, if I make this happen for some reason, I said, would you kind of follow up with you? Because I don't want to, I don't want you to hang up on me again. He said, yes, you definitely have a permission. So uh, it took me a little while. I'm not going to lie. But uh, I developed first biological soil, uh, created something what we had 2,000 years ago from seed to bottle, processes, everything to to make sure we have what the world's missing. And, and, and I sent him a sample and the lab reports. He called me back immediately. And he's like, you did it. I was like, yeah, I did it. So that's how I started Nestle's Hemp, uh, the company that's today known uh, number one highest quality product on the market. 
Yeah, that's an incredible story. And just that you really highlighted that persistent piece just so much there because that really, you know, had you had you given up at any point along the way, you would not have had, you know, the experience that you had. You would not have you would not have had the, you know, potential result to build the company that it is today had you not had that quality. So I think that's so important for people to hear. And and really Inessa with the company, I mean, as far as I could research and I'm not an expert in you know, hemp or really cannabis or anything. I mean, I'm, I'm a pharmacist by trade, so I have, you know, training from a traditional medicine standpoint. But really, I think it's unique to look at this more holistic approach. And a question that I had was really the difference between CBD and CBDA. So I, I think that's probably something, I don't know if listeners out there really even know that that's a thing. I certainly did not until I started researching your company. So would you, would you kindly share what that difference is between those two? Yeah, I just if somebody's standing, I want somebody to sit down. <laughs> so it's gonna be a lot of aha <laughs> moments. I'll make it super simple and super for people to understand where everybody gets it. We're not gonna go in major science fiction here. I can, but I think it's better not to. So let's do very basic here in less than three minutes. As humans, we do have the most essential organ, I would say, in our body. It's brain, and then it's called endocannabinoid system, and that regulates central nervous system. Your central nervous system runs on endocannabinoid system, right? They're all connected together. They send signals to operate between each other. When you are born and a newborn baby, you produce a lot of own cannabinoids. These cannabinoids are just for you to imagine simply and easy. It's this, almost the same thing as in a hemp plant. You have almost the same chemistry of those cannabinoids, just the way it's in a hemp plant, except we need to make the difference which hemp plant, not the one I'm talking on the market. So now your body produces itself. But when you're exposed to the bad food, sugars, toxins, stress, metals, chemtrails, water, tap water, you start losing your own production. And then you start seeing the symptoms such as gut issues, brain issues, mental issues, uh, ovary issues, uh, pregnancy issues, prostate issues, and uh, spleen issues. And now what you go, you go see the doctor and the doctor has never been even educated in a medical school about your endocannabinoid system. Okay. Never once. He has no clue that you have one that is important to empower. So you go to the doctor, he says, oh, you have a symptom XYZ, I'll give you a pill. Then they come to see the pharmacist to get their prescription going. And now they sit on the pill forever. And the problem is still sitting there. It's just, it's just getting deeper and digging deeper. So long story short, this, this plant is essential to your body. You can't live about, you must fulfill just like filling the tank in the car, you must fill the tank. You must put the gas in the car in order to drive again. Now, what happens here in the history, we always had only one plant. We never had cannabis and hemp ever, ever, ever. We always had hemp only. The cannabis, the difference between hemp and cannabis is hemp is known for very low levels of THC. THC, what is THC? Is that psychoactive it makes you go uh, dizzy, crazy, or uh, high, you call it, whatever you call it, right? It's just kind of, it's just not good, I would say. <laughs> uh, so hemp plant does not contain that psychoactive. You're supposed to consume and not feel much about it, except empower your endocannabinoid system that is essential to your body. Cannabis, it's something just happened really recently. It happened in America's laboratories. It was engineered in the United States. We created this monster. It never existed in the nature. And this monster is called cannabis. And now they created this high genetics of THC that never existed in the mother nature. And now when you smoke them, they become carcinogenic. I mean, and you see, this plant itself of high THC never existed. So when God, when somebody tells you this is a God's plant, universe gave you, no. No, I know this is all made in the lab, has coming for re-engineered genetics, never existed in the nature. Give me my original plant. Original plant is the hemp plant, no THCs. 
And I did the study and research globally. I spoke with people that started cannabis books, businesses, research hundreds of years ago. So I spoke with their generations, grand grandchildren. I had to use translators, hire people across the world to figure out what kind of genetics we had, what kind of plants we had, what's the difference between today and yesterday, right? So long story short, so we have hemp and cannabis. The second thing, what do we have? In the hemp plant, there is no such thing as CBD and there is no such thing as THC, even low levels of THC, because every plant has some tiny levels of THCA. There's THCA and there's CBDA. It's acidic cannabinoids. Those acidic cannabinoids cannot be patented by pharmaceutical companies. That means nobody can own them. It belongs to you and mother nature. Nobody can control this compound. So what happens now, we have THC, CBDA in the raw version of the plant that belongs to nobody except us human people. That's it. What happens? Now we have a smart pharmaceutical drug companies that says, you know what? Let's control the substance. Let's allow the CBD marketers promote the CBD product the heck out of this product. And then when we have enough of market share, we're going to actually make it um, as control substance again, because if you go on a smart Google, smart Google tells you that CBD is a drug for epilepsy. As we both know, you can patent mother nature. You can patent only uh, the secondary version of the plant. You can't patent mother nature. You can't patent spinaches or apples. That's it. So there is no CBD and there's no THC. The, the way they get extracted and the way they get CBD and THC is by using very harsh temperatures, solvents, chemicals, and turn into the second version, which is CBD. And that's what the entire country is selling it. And that's where I was one of my little tiny heart attacks when I realized what's going on, you know, and I'm like, oh, no, is this is true if I'm going crazy. But since we know the whole country sells that plus products are very toxic, plus not tested. And if it's tested in the fake labs. So um, so that is the problem. And that's the difference in CBDA is actually been shown to prevent people from COVID on organ research right before we had vaccines rolling out probably a month prior. That's why Nessus Hemp became probably very famous overnight because we're only one company actually having CBDA on the market. And CBDA is the compound, protects you from viruses, bacteria. I mean, you name it. That's not my words, that's research. And CBDA is thousand times stronger and CBDA affects and attacks, not attacks, but actually affects your endocannabinoid system way stronger and more powerful than any CBD product on the market. And people say to me, Zanessa, how it's come my CBD product still works for me? Oh, well, your, your Ambien, your Valium works for you too. Yeah. And I think that's really like an eye-opening discussion. I think that I certainly was not aware of it. Also, I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm, I'm wondering if that was the, was that was the main difference you found with all the other companies that were producing what, it, what we call CBD, that it was just, you know, it wasn't a natural process, right? I mean, they were, they, were, they were building it with a bunch of other substances and compounds and like, you know, I don't know if it's heavy metals or solvents or whatever they're putting into it that is not conducive to, you know, leading you know, I guess a healthy lifestyle in general. Is that, is that what you found when you did that research? Did you find those, those facts to be obviously surprising at the time? Yeah, I find, of course, more than that. Um, I, I don't want to completely shock the whole ind people in the industry right now, but I'm going to share a couple more things that is very going to be easy for people to understand. I found that the lab reports that companies shared with me prior visited them, farm farms and manufacturers, all these lab reports that they had were actually not true. Like they're all faked. So, so I learned that I have to do my own lab reports, but you know, labs that are FD at least registered and, you know, controlled by the, another third party as a laboratory to be accountable for what they say. So uh, what happened else? So I've lab reports failed. That was that means companies failed. And then when I started doing my own lab testing, these products were tested for extremely dangerous substances such as causing cancer, metals, 
um, and bacteria that I don't want to even mention, you know, because it's so dangerous. I don't want to get in trouble, but it's beyond scary. So people spend their $60, $70 for something that they hope is going to help them. But these products are loaded with the things that are actually going to cause them in long-term cancer and multiple other things. One, the other thing was also very bad for people that I visited, like number one, hemp producers and whole foods producers in Colorado and stuff. I said, you guys are still certified organic. How it's come? He said, that's why you shouldn't worry about these lab reports because we still have organic certifications. And I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, they didn't even bother to care. It's like, why you worry what's in the bottle? You're still going to have your logos on. And I'm like, no, that's not okay. Because these people are sick. Everybody needs to empower their own endocannabinoid system. So I was really, really um, unhappy with this crazy stuff going on. But we need to keep in mind, the hemp plant is like a sponge. Is the best of the best soil cleaners on the earth is the hemp. So hemp itself literally sucks every possible toxin in very high extent, air, water, food, soil, everything. So if you want to grow hemp for medicinal purposes, you got to go the way we did. You got to go extra, extra tens of thousands of miles, actually, to create a super clean, precise environment for these seeds to grow very healthy because your hemp plant starts in the soil. It doesn't start in the bottle or in extraction process. It starts in the seed and the soil because, as I said, naturally, hemp is the best uh, is the best sponge for the toxins. And are there are there other companies that are currently producing a product like this? I mean, you you say you you had the first. CBDA product out there and you have, you know, a cer- certification to back that up as far as what goes into it. Are there other, you know, what, what's the competition look like in this space? Do you just have a stranglehold on it or is there other, is there other, uh, you know, potential fish in the sea that are coming after you? Uh, I would want them to. I even offered uh, over $10,000. Anybody who is willing to do exact same lab reports in parts per billion, Pages of pages of testing on the each bottle that goes on the market to prove quality and safety with credible labs that are actually accountable and, you know, by FD, uh, FD, uh, FD uh, institutions. So not single one company wanted to take $10,000 because not single one company is willing to do lab reports. The ones I was offering to do app, let's compare apples to apples. That's it. It's very simple. You're going to send your product in this lab. I'm going to send my product in this lab and we're going to compare apples to apples. I'll give you $10,000 for that. Tens of thousands of brands, not single one of them agreed to do it. Oh my gosh. That, that honestly, that's crazy, but, but they probably didn't want to do that because you know, their business model would crumble if they were to agree to that. It's like basically taking a $10,000 death sentence to, to cripple their business if, they're, if they know they're not going to pass that test. I, that, at least that's the inclination that I get from it. Our lab that I work with, because I have fun right now, so much fun, because they did certify us as the highest quality product in the States as the first one to come on the market like that. But uh, it's funny because they, they said, Inasa, we're just losing customers every day. It's like, why am I losing customers? You are most credible lab in, in the United States. You're most awarded lab in the United States. And they said, we're losing customers because the customers, which is CBD producers, CBD owners, do ask a laboratory to change the numbers. And the lab says, no, we're not going to play the game like everybody else is playing. And now they say, okay, I'm just going to go to the next lab. Who's going to play my game? That's it. And they lose customers. They lose 50% before they even do the testing of the customers. And when they do the test, when they see results, they lose these customers too. So the lab is struggling big time because they give you a real data. Yeah, gosh. Well, well, maybe we have somebody listening right now that, that the gears are turning. Maybe there's someone out there that thinks, you know, I'm up for that challenge. If someone wants to reach out to you, Anessa, what's the best way to do that? What's the best way to get involved with either your company or yourself personally? Um, the best way to get involved with us is Nessas Hemp. So it's N-E-S-A-S, Nessas Hemp.com, N-E-S-A-S. And the customer service are great. We have everyone dedicated there for you. So if you need to connect with us, 
um, or regenesis369.com. It's my consulting company where we help everyone with 100% success rate uh, to overcome all kinds of type of uh, health situations. Well, well, thank you, Anessa. I really appreciate all the insights. Thank you so much for the time today. We'll have people reach out. We'll tag all of that in the show notes. And again, Anessa Pono Mario Vita, thank you so much for, for being a guest on the show today. Anessa Hemp, we're excited to see where it's going. We're excited to see you change the world. And we'll look forward to keeping up with you soon. <laughs>